All right, welcome back. We're going to play some more Shogi Wars. Um, I think I have this set up correctly. So I select a time control. And last time I picked 10 minute, and I think that's probably best. Either 10 minute or 10 seconds probably best for me because I'd rather not play something where I'm trying to time out my opponent. So yeah, welcome. We're just going to play some nice, friendly, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. And then after this, we might play some other games. Oh, come on. Can it really take so long to find an opponent? There we go. Maybe. Maybe not. The dancing ball spins and spins. All right, good luck. <laughs> Silver. All right. Ooh. We're talking now. This looks fun. All right. I have no idea what's about to happen, but this looks very exciting. Um... Hmm. Let's castle before it becomes too late. Alright, their silver attacks my bishop. I don't have a checkmate. I kind of wish I did. That'd be pretty awesome if I did. Um... Let's go back. Oh, well, that's a strange move as well. Even stranger than mine, I think. All right, um... Hmm. What to do? So they've broken in. I guess that's fine. It's not like I was going to be able to do much about that anyway. Hmm... I didn't think we'd end up here, to be honest. Like, putting their bishop straight in front of their king allows for some exciting tactics later. Um... Not sure how much later. Is this really what they had planned? Oh, they're threatening to put a pawn in front of my rook. Um... Let's just get my rook out of here. Why have I not just attacked the silver? 
Do I have something against playing common sense moves? Maybe I do. Um. Uh, we didn't need the bishop anyway. Nanafun. Nanafun to you too. All right. Is this the big idea? I don't mind having a second, or that is my first bishop, rather. Um, all right, they promote. What a strange position. Okay, what gives? I don't understand. I think we're both a bit sack happy. Perhaps me more so than him, but still. <sighs> Hmm. Oh, my pawn prevents the king from going to 4-2 here. Um. So, I have a threatened silver drop, which smells like mate. Uh, also, I could just push the pawn directly toward the king to mate. Um, not sure how they get out of this. I think they have to take my pawn, but I still don't think there's a way out. They do have a knight. The knight could be scary. Perhaps I missed a checkmate. Okay, what? No, that does not work. Um, let's check. Good game. Good game. Very exciting. I forgot to say good luck at the beginning, but good luck, good game, etc. Yes! We made it to 27Q. Alright, let's play another match. To turn the volume down just a touch here. Because that is... You can hear it. You can feel the noise. Alright. Versus Wandan. Good luck. Um, oh, we got Senta. That's exciting. Huh. Is this so? Um, yeah, central foul rook it is. We're gonna plug the center again. Castle to the side. Um, all right. Um, instead of doing something crazy aggressive, let's play calm developing moves. Um, mm -hmm. If I try to oppose on the first file, uh, his silver just comes over and wrecks me, so we're going to try this instead. Um, 
Do I block my bishop? That doesn't seem right. All right, let's block the bishop. Sure, why not? Normally, I would just go directly behind the pawn, but this it looks somewhat interesting. I don't know why. Um, okay. I could transpose into an opposing rook situation. Um... Finish building Mino Castle. Get tired of trying to fight down the center file because they stick all their generals in the center. So we're going to approach this way. Um, I've built Mino. I could expand this into Tower Mino and probably should. Because this bishop's going to be a problem someday. I think that they'll try tacking on the third file. I think. And, okay. This indicates that they're not, in fact, attacking down the third file. Um. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know what to do. I guess make room for Tower Mino? Or High Mino. Um, Alright. Um, I cover both squares the knight could move to. Oh, I've given up this pawn. Oops. Well, let's say we did that on purpose. It doesn't look that bright, but I don't know that they could actually take this. Things get slightly complicated, but not really complicated after they take it. I could still break on the second file here. A pawn is not the worst thing to have given up. Um, the scary part is that their bishop's going to activate, and my rook has nowhere to go. So, hmm. yeah, I did not think this through deeply enough. I mean, it looks like a clean pawn. They can just take it, and I have to drop my silver back here to blockade the diagonal. And I, although they don't have any way they can immediately destroy my position, my position's not that great. The only thing in my favor is that this knight is immobilized. Um, which is kind of nice. But, um... Yeah, I need to attack down this diagonal exchange rooks and hope that there's some target I can strike at. It's not looking good. Um, separately, I'm dreaming of ways that, you know, maybe someday I can exchange rooks and then sack my silver for a knight and drop the knight here. Or drop the knight and then attack the pawn and take the pawn or something. Looks unlikely. Um... So, I'm not sure what they're planning. They might also be planning just moving the rook over and breaking on the third file. <sighs> Completely ruining all of the tension that I've got here. Um...
They have blocked their bishop. It does not make sense to me. Um, I guess since they're not going to let me... Oh, okay. That makes more sense now. Still, I have something I can do while they do whatever it is they're doing. We're going to break in with our bishop. So I did find a useful way to uh, spend my tempi. The downside is that their rook could use this file just as well as my rook can. So it's not a great position for me. Um, hmm. This is surprising. So if silver takes, I can promote the bishop. If bishop takes, I can blockade their bishop. They don't have a knight in hand just yet. So them taking this pawn is not so useful for them. Um, therefore, I can promote more pieces. Um... This is so clumsy, but what can I do? I've protected my bishop, and I'm trying to make room for my rook behind my lance. This is so clumsy, but, I mean, what can I do? If I put a pawn down, they just oppose my pawn with anything. Actually, they could still oppose my lance, and they could drop the pawn in front of the lance. Whereas if I put a pawn here, they put a pawn there, and, like, there's nowhere for me to go. Alright. Now that's sensible on their part. Um, I'm gonna promote our lance. Okay. Um. Hmm. All right, we'll try to activate the rook. No promises. I was idly thinking about maybe my rook wants to go back to the center file at some point. But that seems like a poor fate for the rook. Um, they could do silver take silver. Uh, okay, so... This is asking if I can give up my knight uh, to a silver fork back here. I don't see why not. 
That is the question, right? Silver takes silver. Oh, the other good thing is they might promote their bishop right next to my rook. Right. Gofun. Gofun. Five minutes. Um... Hmm. This is not where I want to put my silver. Oh my good. Well, no, okay, it's protected. I freaked out for a second and I forgot how pieces move. Um, no, it's protected. All right. I guess we'll just gradually work our way over toward the king. Pretend that everything's normal. Um, this is the slowest expedition ever. But what can they do? I mean, they can attack my castle directly, and my gold can run, and they drop another piece, and I can only run so far. Um... Promoted knight. Why is this promoted knight so effective? Is it? I guess I'm sacrificing two golds to get rid of this bishop before it promotes. Which is not great. There's so much about this, this is less than ideal. Um, but yeah, my knight protects my rook, which saves me one tempo somewhere in this mess. But yeah, my attack is abysmally slow. So I better hope that I have a defense here. Right, do I take this knight? Do I really need it? Survey says probably, but, um... Hmm... I mean, what the hell can I do here? This is not a good position. It's only gonna get worse. If I take, they drop right in front here. It's just a very difficult position. All right, we're going to activate my rook. Or at least threaten to. This has a separate problem that, um, yeah, everything is bad here. Um, I attack my silver. Okay, we activate my Rook, finally. So they've got more than enough pieces to checkmate us. <sighs> what can I do? What can I do?
got a bishop and a rook. Nifu. Mm -hmm. Nifu to you too, buddy. Um. Yeah, I'm not seeing any way I can salvage this. The problem is that there's a very direct mate. I guess this is the best I can do. Um... So I've prevented both mate and one threats. A uh, bishop really is not helping my king here. And there's not very far for my king to run in any event. Yeah, so we're in check. Um... Well, if I block with something else, there's a direct mate, so... Oh, this mate's also, doesn't it? Nicely played. Good game. Alright, that's game number two. Let's get a third game in for today. All right, 2Q, go to, all right, they played this gold on move one. This could be fun, maybe. I'm not an expert on central foul rook. But obviously my last opponent knew that far, far better than I did. Um, and far better than I could pretend to right now. Okay, what? Nothing can defend this pawn. Well, okay, now there is a way this pawn could be defended. But... Um, I mean, he's clearly angling for a fight here. So, let's have a fight. Alright, um... Oh, we've got a pawn in hand. Don't know what we do with it. Um. Hmm. I should just castle as if nothing's going on. A free silver. Okay. If you insist. Um, sure, we'll take it. Christmas has come early this year. Um, yeah, I'm very confused. Very, very confused. Alright. They are attacking my silver. That much I see. I guess they have really limited the scope of my bishop for a turn or two. Um, that's an interesting castle they've constructed. Flatfish Mino. Alright, so that's what this thing is. The flatfish, Mino. 
Um, but yeah, I think almost certainly there's been a misplay R10 by this point. Um, because they've given away a silver and a pawn, and it's just, this is super weird. I don't understand what they're doing. They're trying to do something unorthodox. That far they've succeeded. This is pretty unorthodox, but... Um... Yeah, I don't know, man. <sighs> Maybe they saw my last game and smelled a weakness. Um... You know what? Screw this. Let's have some fun. Oh, maybe they're going for the trophies. Okay, that would explain it. Because, yeah, whatever this is did not make any sense with the position. Um, like, yeah, they played something aggressive, but... I'm not such a fan of the way it turned out for them, um, to put it mildly. I guess my gold here is not defended. I have been a bit reckless. Exchanging bishops has exposed my gold back here, and my rook is also in the center of the board, so, like, this is not perfect, but, um, it's not bad. It's just, could be a lot better. So they retreat. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this promoting pawn. Playing against Stockfish has given me some sense of how exchanges work or do not work in Shogi. Um, even just Stockfish level 1. I've had some really fun combinations happen. Um, I'm not saying this is accurate, but uh, it's just interesting. That I can continue attacking. And just like the attack does not wear down. So the whole idea is I want to get my rook moving away from this pawn. But I don't want to spend a turn moving my rook. So that's why I'm doing all this aggressive stuff right in the middle. Um... So if knight takes, if the king retreats, I cannot mate the king. If I could, I, I should, but since I don't have a mate, this is the next best thing. Um, this is pretty good. A knight up there would be great, to be honest. Um... So we'll take this diagonal to protect our king, to attack the pawn over here, threaten knight to spawn. Um, I forgot, he can actually place things and attack oh, stuff too. Yeah, I need to be a little bit cautious. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are going to run out of pieces to place, but... Um... Some caution would not be a bad thing. All 
All right. Um, didn't need to give up the pawn. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. I have no idea. You would know better than I would know. But we still got two pawns in hand. Like, there's a little white two indicating how much um, they still have left. Um... Hmm. Alright, I'm tired of my promoted rook. Let's exchange this way. Probably don't need to do this. This probably just complicates a otherwise winning position, but I'm down three and a half minutes and I have no idea what to do. So, we're gonna do it this way. Somehow this feels simple. There we go. Worst case, we just end up exchanging these rooks. And I win a piece. Then have to win the game over and over and over again. Um, Alright, they choose to try to save their rook. Which is not going to work if I actually do pursue it, but I want the king. The rook is chump change. I want the king. So, how do I get the king? Probably by winning the rook, to be honest. Um, Okay, so if I do nothing, they're just going to put something down and chase my rook away again. So my rook has to be on this back rank. This is the most effective square for the rook. Um, and this also forces them to put down a piece to block. And now we can attack from the other direction. I don't care about your knight. I just want the corner. Um... Although this does give me ideas. Sampun. Okay, I have a million pieces attacking. Uh, I guess it makes sense for you to counterattack, but it's not going to be successful. Um This is I'm I'm sure this lance drop is clumsy. Um but it sure seems to get the job done. Um There we go. I'm sure there was a more efficient mate at the end. Um, but yeah, that does the job. So three games today, two more ranks today. If we progress at a rate of two ranks every single day, um, then by a month or two from now, we'll be um, nine on pro. So um, I don't think we can keep up that rate. But, um, one can dream. Uh, yeah, we should take a look at some of this, because you guys had comments. Um, I did certainly think... Oh, when would... Okay, so this app is going to provide... No, I don't know if it provides evaluations or not, but um, when did I think... Oh, can I not rotate the board? All right, whatever. Also, wow, this is noisy. Sorry about all the noise. Um, so when did I think I was winning this? 
Uh, when did I first think I was winning? Not here. Um, and so, yeah, the retreat. Uh, this is actually probably a good retreat, accounting for the fact that, like, I missed, if I start exchanging things on the second file, I can pawn drop and start having some fun over here, although I don't know if that works. But this retreat seemed reasonable. Maybe it's not. Um... Yeah, so they do this bishop exchange, then they start the attack, I start a counterattack. And somewhere around here they panic. Um, not there, but... Yeah, this pawn drop is a nice move. This silver drop is also nice. Um, am I just winning? Is it really that simple that just the king is in the center, and even though it, in theory it could escape, uh, I'm just going to continue getting tempy against it. Um, yeah, sorry, this was the third game. Um, there is a reverse on the right-hand side. All right, I can't really read the white on yellow, but I think what you're saying is that this button on the right-hand side says... No, this one, the gray one, the white text on the gray button here says reverse. Um, yeah, this one. I could click it. I think I clicked it last stream, too. All right. Yeah, this is better. Um, so, yeah, is the deal here that I'm just winning? That doesn't seem right. But maybe I'm better. Even though, like, my rook is one move away from being attacked, I have a fun little attack in the interim. Um, when did they do something strange? I think this pawn move, like, they should have just exchanged. No, exchanging pawns just lets me do a pawn drop here. Although my pawn, if dropped here, is not promoted. Yeah, so this surprised me. Um, and so I did the only thing I could think of, which is just attack. Um, I am crushing here. I'm clearly winning, thanks to King's safety. Okay. This is good news. Uh, I thought I was just very fortunate, but, um, okay. Clearly winning. Uh, did not have any sense of that at the time. I'm like, well, my rook is in danger. I had better do something. That was my thought, but okay. Uh, clearly winning. We'll take it. Um, because, yeah, I have the silver to drop. Like, if I didn't have these pieces in hand, this would be a different story, but... Uh, with the silver drop, the rook had to move away. Um, yeah, you're saying I didn't even have to give up the pawn or something. Maybe here, maybe later. Maybe advance the knight, try to continue. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah. Um, I guess the, this one tempo against the rook is not the end of the world. Because I can play rook 5-5 five five if I have to, or rook 5-6, or rook somewhere. And he continues attacking it, my rook continues dancing. But his king's right in the center of the board. Okay. Um, gold 5-7. So yeah, we just take that thonk right in the middle of the board. Um... <laughs> yeah, I'll have to practice this sort of thing. Instead of pushing... Yeah, okay. Um, interesting. Even given an hour to think, I don't think that ever would have hit my... Well, it would hit my candidate move list, but um, I'm not sure that I would ever play the gold drop here. But there is a strong consensus among my audience that it's a good move. Uh... I mean, it makes some sense in that you can continue exchanging pieces and maybe something positive happens next, like you can put the bishop next to it, exchange this, promote, then you're attacking this gold. I guess it makes sense. There's no real other way forward here other than sacking the pawn, which we're saying was unnecessary, but it worked anyway somehow. Removing defenders and gaining attackers. Okay, so 
that's the key idea. The way it played out in the game, I guess, was fortunate. Um, so, yeah, I did this fork they took. I, so I gave up one of my attackers for one defender. Uh, actually, no. I gave it up for zero defenders. Um, and I attacked. And this seems to have worked out anyway, by coincidence. But I gave up an attacker to do this. Um, yeah, and they just... This is very poor. Uh, I mean, the position was difficult already, but this makes it very difficult. Be even more difficult than it already was. This bishop drop is probably wrong. Um, I was down... Oh, are these the clock times the game? All right, so I was only down uh, about three minutes. I could have spent some more time thinking here. But my opponent was playing quickly, and I was excited by the idea of knight takes pawn. And I just missed that they had lots of pawns and stuff in hand to try to make this more complicated. Not that it succeeds, but... Um, well, maybe it does. Maybe it is complicated. Yeah. So, bringing my rook forward doesn't really help that much. Putting the knight up here would have been nice. And then, if necessary, move the rook somewhere and just slowly attack. But it worked out in the game. So, I guess what we're concluding... How far back do I want to go? Like, them giving up this pawn and exposing weakness probably scared them out of the prospect of whatever castle they wanted to build, so they just stuck with this crab castle or flatfish or whatever it is. I recognize that this sort of thing is a castle too, but I assume they had greater aspirations than what this was. I probably didn't need to take the pawn. It didn't really lead anywhere. Um... Uh, this pawn move was a complete waste. Uh, this is perhaps unnecessary to let my king escape, but there was no harm in it. Yeah, this caught me by surprise. Um, it's a good move. I just didn't see it. And this had me scrambling a bit, like, oh crap, I haven't attacked. Yes, I've taken a pawn and then retreated my silver. I was more expecting the rook to move over to the 8th file here, even though there's no attack right now. Uh, like, the 8th file seems to be the only place the rook could attack me, uh, and I completely missed this. Um, wait. Wait, did I have anything here against that? I have a silver in hand. Yeah, they're not even threatening this pawn push. If they push the pawn, I could drop the silver to fork the rook and pawn. So it's an empty threat. They'd have to push this pawn before that would be a threat. And if they push this pawn, then I have a bishop drop. No, I don't. I don't have a bishop yet. But in theory, when I do have a bishop, then I have a bishop drop forking the rook and lance. So, okay. That's what had me confused. So this was a waste. And I didn't need to defend because I already have a silver drop to defend against this. Because uh, somehow I got the silver in hand... And, I mean, even though if I got the silver drop, they do another silver drop, they hit my rook. It is a little bit complicated, but um, actually that just gives up a silver. I take the rook, they take my rook, I take their silver, so never mind. Yeah, it's fine. I see. So, yeah. It's just winning the entire time. Um, this I thought was reasonable. This... I didn't think fit with any of the other things they were doing. So, if they had a silver on the side of the board, I could understand this. If they had some other pressure on the side of the board, uh, or were strongly threatening to move their knight out or something, like, any of those reasons could be a re good reason to move this pawn. Um, yeah, so I returned the favor here, and I expected them to push their remaining edge pawn, and they did not. Um, yeah, they surprised me with an attack. Um, 
I played a really slow move I didn't need to play. They surprised me with another slow move. I guess trying to... Oh, this... Okay, this is the point. <laughs> so they don't have to, like, do this other thing I was saying to stop my silver drop. They could also just retreat the rook. Wait a second. I'm an idiot. I mean, we knew that, but silver drop right here. Rook moves. Pawn drop right where the rook is. That would have been the canonical way to deal with this. The problem there... Um... It gets complicated. Um, eventually their rook ends up taking the pawn. I promote my silver. They promote their pawn. See, I never mind. The really cautious thing I did was actually fine. There's no re need for me to hurry because my king is safer than theirs. See, I read this. I had the correct feeling here. Yeah, they finally do play this pawn move. And I push, and that might be a bit hasty. Um, instead of pushing, there are a lot of things I could have considered here. Uh, they do have a silver... No, they don't. They gave away silver in the opening, so I'm still completely winning, like, no matter what happens. I didn't have to push the pawn, I could have moved the rook up. There's Being up a silver makes this, like, a thousand times easier, and I didn't appreciate that until just now. So, yeah. Um, okay, and you would have saved the silver here for a potential attack. And yeah, it did really pay off. So, I guess the point at which I became completely winning is right there. Um, because, like, objectively speaking, it's not a total victory. There still could be a lot to be played out, but... Um, our opponent did not find anything, and we just won. Which is kind of nice. Um, our opponent probably could have found some more resources. Um, there's, It's not game over yet, but the king being in the center, this being an interesting castle, and having this vanguard pawn threatening to push and exchange bishops and just have a lot of fun here. Uh, really worked out. Um, so I think this silver move was a bit hasty. Um, maybe they didn't want to push the pawn. I don't know. I expected them to push the pawn at some point. And I didn't really know what to do against that. But um, I guess that's a different game. Alright, well, I guess that wraps up this analysis here. Yeah, this is definitely a different game. Of, um, these get exchanged, and um, my silver may or may not belong all the way up here. I never finished building my castle, so pushing the silver all the way out was probably not worth it in hindsight. It would have made more sense for it to be right back here, preventing this pawn push trapping their silver in, so they'd have to retreat in order to be able to make more advances. Um, yeah. So that's how I messed up. The silver really doesn't belong on the, the third file at all. Um, it belongs on the second file, so they could either push the pawn in the first or the third file. But since they brought it over, if I could just keep my silver back here... Um, yeah, how did we time this? Okay, yeah, they baited me out, and I took the bait. And there was no need for me to do that at all. Um, I like taking pawns, but there I could have like delayed that a bit, finished building the castle, and then started chasing the pawn. It's still going to be there. Huh. Yeah. Food for thought. Think about other reputations to this thing. This really doesn't help their position at all, unless the rook somehow makes it behind the pawn. Um, yeah, maybe I did have to chase it, because now the rook can't go behind the pawn. Otherwise, like, they could have done this twisting rook thing.
Maybe there's some merit to this. Um, there might be other bishop exchange ideas, like if I push the silver up and then bring it forward, chasing the rook that goes on this file, maybe something could have happened, but... Eh, interesting game. 